Hi, Booktube. This is Johnny. Hoping you're having a good evening. It is a Tuesday evening here in West Michigan. I can hear the crickets. It is 8.51 at night here in by Lake Michigan. It is August the 29th. We're coming to the close of the month of August. I was thinking about that a minute ago. I have to do about what I'm going to be reading throughout the month of sep September. Well, one thing is with Minamori Adam, we're going to read The Decamperian by Bossolini. So I really got to get into this. I'm going to really have to uh, focus in the, in the month of September because, uh, I mean, if, if I if I put my mind to it, I can read I think we gotta read like well, it's like nine hundred wait a minute, without the notes. It's eight hundred and sixty pages. So I don't know how that breaks down each day, but I can sit down and read, well, there's a hundred stories. I think there's a hundred days. Let me see here. I can't remember. I think there's 10 days and there's, I don't know, a hundred stories. I, I don't remember. Anyway, what I will do is that I will start on September the 1st, day one. And I'll read day two, which would be 188 pages, which is, you know, I can read that. I don't know if the, how fluid the text is, the translation. It was translated uh, out of, I think, Italian by, this is the uh, Wayne A. Reeb Re Re Hornet translation. So if I read, well, wait a minute, 108 pages is like that many pages. I can read that if I really sit down and, because what I, what I do is I sit down and I read and I'll read for maybe 25 minutes and then I'll get up or I'll, I'll write in my diary or I'll go on the internet or I'll go watch the birds. If I just sit down, maybe I'll use my, my, clock here and I'll say okay I'm gonna read this for an hour you know I'm just gonna focus on the text it's like when I was in Bible college or seminary where I had to just read massive amounts of material and then I had to uh, digest it and comprehend it and then I had to spew it all back into papers and exams and stuff like that so I don't know, that's my goal. On September the 1st, I'll read, well, let me see here. I'll read day two, I'll read up to day two, story five. That would be my goal, to have that done. I've been reading the introduction, well not, uh, which I find really, really interesting. And I've been looking stuff online and here in Holland, there's Hope College Library. If I want to do some deeper research, I can go to Hope College just down the street from where I live. And there's also Calvin College and our own public library if I really want to get deep into it. But I don't think that we're going to get that deep into it. We're just going to read the text and just see how it goes. I never done a buddy read. I don't think I ever read a book with anybody on booktube but I've always wanted to read this I've had this is I have five five editions of this book now and I've been wanting to read it for as long as I can remember when I was in seminary I read Dante's Inferno I did a I had a seminar like a, a three or four week seminar and we had to I, don't know, I forgot the context, but I read the three, I read the whole Dante's Inferno and I did a big paper on it. But that was like back in the 80s. I don't remember, but I really enjoyed reading Dante's Inferno. I really, I really got into it. And uh, 
But because I read in the introduction that Dante's Inferno really and had an influence on the Decamperon and Bosolini, so we'll see. So yeah, so here I sit just rambling away. What did I read today? Well, today, uh, as I mentioned, my wife got in last night at 11.45. And we didn't get to bed until 2 o'clock in the morning because my wife was on different time. And she was all, we just talked and talked and talked and talked. And talked. So we finally got to bed at 2 o'clock, and then I got up this morning, I don't know, about 7.45, something like that, around 8 o'clock. And I never really got into reading anything, because then this morning my wife had to do all these errands, because she went back to work tonight. She works tonight, and then she works Wednesday, and then she's off four nights. So she's all was all getting to do errands this morning. So one of the things that we did this morning is that she had to go pick up a book at the public library uh, and that she had put on hold. She's got into these mystery novels that's all centers around birds. And when we were at the library, uh, of course I have to go to the library used bookstore, the book nook, so we went down there and the woman who's in charge of volunteers cornered me and said, we need somebody to cover Friday in September, starting in September, Friday morning from 10 to 1. Will you do it, Johnny? Will you please come back to the book nook? And so I gave in and said, yeah, I'll come back and I'll volunteer from 10 to 1 on Fridays. Even though when I said that, I felt kind of like, oh, the, I got the creeps, I got, I felt freaked out, I felt anxious. I got, you know, I have this thing about committing myself to anything you know, as far as time. I don't know, I don't like doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, I don't like having appointments. I just want to be left to just drift through existence. But I do like the book. No, I do. I did like the book. Nook. I liked the people talking about books. I liked. I got a lot of good books out of the book nook over the last six years. I volunteered there, and I do like the people, the volunteers, and I like the library. I like the librarians. And I like. I like libraries, and I like being a part of that. Even though there's a part of me that freaks out about having to go there now, but at least it's not on Saturdays. See, Saturdays is kind of nice because then we have Saturdays free. Like this coming Saturday, we're going to go over and celebrate our granddaughter Josie's birthday on Saturday. So I have to, I don't have to worry about the, well, I don't start the book nook until next month, September the 15th. But now Saturdays are free. So that's kind of nice. So when we were at the book nook, my wife bought children's books children's magazines, and I bought a book. <laughs> I bought this novel. I never heard of this writer. This is called Anya by Susan Fromberg Schaefer. I never heard of her, but uh, she's written a ton of stuff. Look at all this stuff that she's written. She's written like one, two. This is her third, second novel. Uh, 1974. And she's written like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen novels, you know, five books of poetry. She's professor at the university of now this is this was came out now I don't know if this woman this is this came out in seventy four. That's a long time ago. 74, man, that was a long time ago. Anyway, it looked interesting. Uh, it reminded me of the biography of Isaiah. Uh, I've been reading Isaiah Berlin's biography. Uh, I won't go reading a reading about it, but <coughs> I had to get something, and I don't know. It just it's one of those Holocaust kind of novels, Jewish Holocaust. I don't know. I won't go into it because. 
I don't want to make this video a huge long thing. So I got that. Bought, so I'm back at the book nook, back freaking myself out, getting all anxious and blah, you know, all this. So my wife came home and she brought me two used books. When she was in Denver with our daughter and her family, they went to the library there. One of the, she said, the, my wife said, the libraries in Denver are just incredible. And there's a library right where they, near where my daughter and their family moved to there in Denver. And they were at the library and they had a, a used book section. My wife called me up on her cell phone and she's going through the biographies. She knows I just love biographies. And she asked if I had these biographies. And this one I didn't, she mentioned several, but these are the ones I didn't have. This is called Patriarch George Washington and the New American Nation by Richard Norton Smith. I have his biography here on Rockefeller, Nelson Rockefeller. On His Own Terms, A Life of Nelson Rockefeller by Richard Norton Smith. This is a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, Rockefellers have always, I have other books on Rockefellers downstairs. I have these books on American dynasties like the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers and oh, I don't know who else. Other people. Anyway, so I have two two biographies of this guy. He wrote biographies also on uh, An Uncommon Man, The Triumph of Herbert Hoover, The Harvard Century, The Making of a University to a Nation, The Colonel, The Life and Legend of Robert R. McCormick, Patriarch George Washington, The New American Nation. So, so yeah, I also have this by um, this biography on George Washington, which by a very famous uh, American historian, Washington by Ron Shurganoff. I think he has a new one coming out on Ulysses, uh, the uh, Ulysses S. Grant from the the general and the president after the Civil War. So. And she also got me a biography on Anthony Trollope. I'm really a big Trollope fan. I never heard of the, I don't, didn't have this Trollope biography. I have other ones. I have all of, well, I don't have all of Trollope's works, but I have a great deal of them. Because he wrote novels and travel and I think he wrote an autobiography. This is Anthony Trollope by James Pope. Hensley. This is an older biography. I, I looked it up. It was, I think it was first published in the 30s. This is a, uh, it has, uh, it's, it has big print. It's not dense. It's not, it doesn't look scholarly. It has illustrations in it. It could be a popular biography in Anthony Trollope, but I really love Trollope. I don't love, I hate that word. I enjoy reading the writings of Trollope. The only thing I love is God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Trinity, the saints, the church, the elect angels, and my family, and and I have brotherly love for my neighbors. And so I got that. Well, my wife brought that to me. My wife, when she's anywhere, if she's at a used bookstore, or she's at something, she'll call on her cell phone and say, do you have this? And I just saw this, so I don't know. In the mail, I got a book, one of my favorite books. Uh, I mentioned this. They were this is the uh, by the Portuguese writer who passed away a long time ago. It's called The Book of Disquiet by Fernando Paseo. Pes uh, this is the uh, this came in the mail today. This is the the uh, it's supposed to be the the complete edition. See, I have two of these editions. This is a I have one on a bookshelf somewhere down the lower level, and I keep this one near my laptop downstairs. And this is one of my favorite books. Uh, I haven't read it. I think I read it several years ago, 
but it's kind of a book that you can dip into, in and out of. Uh, so now I have the complete edition. And tonight I was, I've was i been reading, just rereading the first parts. So now I got that in the mail. Isn't that neat cover? And I got two of these editions. Hey, it has like his, in there. It like has, you know, things like this. So yeah, so I look forward to looking at this. When my wife got home last night, I was reading this book, The World Broken 2, Virginia Woolf, T.S. Eliot, D.H. Lawrence, E.M. Forster, or Foster, Foster, The Year That Changed Literature, which is 1922, by Bill Goldstein. Uh, I've been re I read this today and last night. Uh, it's really, really, uh, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, oh, I forgot. I did uh, Sunday when I, I mentioned uh, Sunday I went downtown to Windmill Restaurant for breakfast and then when right down the street from the Windmill is Reader's World Bookstore, which is an independently owned bookstore. I went there to get Sunday newspapers for my wife. But I also picked a book up. <laughs> I picked up this book, this big massive chunker the house of government the saga of the russian revolution by yure zuzinski uh, i've been looking at this for a couple of months it's been mentioned on youtube i have this fascination with uh with russian history and the Cold War and the rise of communism in European and Russian history. So I picked this up. And when my son came over Monday, I think it was, or Sunday, I can't remember now. They brought over some New Yorkers, so I've been looking through those. So that's what I've been reading. That's what I got in the mail. I've still been reading Mass Cult and Mid Cult Essays Against the American Green by Dwight McDonald. St I almost finished with Sleepless Nights by Elizabeth Hardwick. Really enjoying this. Have enjoyed it. Reading in the mornings, uh, The Deep Things of God, How the Trinity Changes Everything. This is really a great Christian book. I've uh, been really blessed by this. As far as my diary, today I ended on page 792. Tomorrow is August the 30th, and I'll be on 793 if the Lord does not come back. The last trump doesn't blast, and we go to meet the Lord in the air. So that's what's going on in my book world. That's what used books, books in the mail, books by bookstores. Neat cover, isn't it? I really, this is really an incredible book. I wish I could talk about it like an intellectual. It's translated out of Portuguese by uh, Margaret Tolcasta. Uh, I've noticed that when I, I was on library thing, I looked up this uh, Margaret. She's translated a lot of uh, I, I have several writers who are Portuguese, and she's one of the primary translators out of Portuguese. But I look forward to dipping into this tonight, and what I'm not reading in September, the Decantheon. So yeah, I got books coming in the mail. I might go to thrift stores tomorrow. I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of tired because I didn't get my sleep last night. I've been feeling kind of freaked a little bit, getting the creeps. But we'll see. So I thought I'd make this video. It's been 24 hours. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. Hope you have a good week. Until next time. Bye.